Hey, today we're doing a fun one. We're creating this component, which is something I'm calling a toggle bar. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but it's something in between a toggle switch and a segmented bar. Now in NativeScript, you have a segmented bar control, but it doesn't give you enough flexibility for styling. And it also looks completely different on iOS and Android, which is fine and has its own uses. But the benefit of using something like this is that you can style it completely to how you like, and it will look the same on iOS and Android. That's what we're building today. Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Alex. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. We do native script tutorials here. You can take a look back at the library to see all the different cool things that we've been doing. And what we're doing today is implementing this really cool toggle bar control. I called it a toggle bar. I don't know if it has an official name for it. Once you're done watching this and you see what we're building, let me know in the comments what you think this control should be called. So this is a component we're just gonna build using code, JavaScript, but you can also wrap this component uh, as a standalone component in your NativeScript Angular apps and your NativeScript Vue apps as well. Oh, by the way, you might be wondering where we are. Well, I'm still in my house, but I'm just about 20 feet away from my office where I usually shoot these videos. This is my secondary space, and the reason I'm here, I have my camera set up, is because I'm creating a course. A couple of new courses now for nativescripting.com. This one's called NativeScript View Pro Course, and there's also the NativeScript View Styling Course that are coming up as well. So those are getting ready. We've got our beta testers that are contributing some ideas. If you are on a beta team, thank you very much for sending in your videos. And also the Facebook group for the pro members is now open. It's a private Facebook group for those folks to communicate between each other and to share ideas and knowledge about NativeScript. So if you're a member of any of the pro courses, NativeScript Core Pro, NativeScript with Angular Pro, or NativeScript View Pro, even though that course is on pre-sale right now and there's no content yet, you can still be a member of the Facebook group. So just go to your course, head on over to that first lesson there, and you'll see a link to it. All right, let's build this thing. We're gonna be creating this component today, which is a toggle switch, segmented bar type of control. I called it a toggle bar. This is to replace the segmented bar that comes with native script because the segmented bar, while it's a nice control, it looks one way on iOS and it looks completely differently on Android. And they look fine on each respective platform, but they're not consistent. And if you want a consistent look, then you're, you kind of have to make your own. So that's what we're doing today. We're rolling our own. And by doing that, we're going to get a whole bunch of styling options. So I'm not gonna make a component in this video, but I will show you how to get all that stuff set up and then you can extract a component yourself. You can extrapolate that. And the reason I'm doing it that way is because if you're working with NativeScript Angular or NativeScript Vue, you can take the logic that I'm about to write here and you can just wrap that in a component. All right, so here we are. This is a brand new project that I just scaffolded out. I've already deleted all the comments and all the unnecessary code. So I just have main page XML, main page TS code behind file, and we're gonna be using some CSS here. All right, let's go to main page XML and define our markup here. So I'm gonna start with a grid layout, and this is gonna be our toggle switch, toggle bar. All right, so I'm gonna give it this class of toggle, and I also wanna handle the loaded event. So I'm gonna call this on toggle loaded. And inside here, I'm gonna give it some elements. Now, if I want to have three items in there, I'm gonna have three labels. If I want four items, I'm gonna have four labels and so on. So I'm gonna create a label for each one of the items. And I'm just gonna give it really generic text, like one, two, and three. And let's give it a class toggle label. And I'm gonna use the text center class that already comes with NativeScript theme. We're importing that right here in our root app.css file. All right, so that's gonna center our label text. Let's go ahead and see how this looks. So I'm gonna run this. I'm gonna head out to the terminal and issue the command TNS run iOS. So that's gonna start off in iOS and we'll take a look at Android. It should look the same after this boots up. There's our iPhone 11 Pro Max. I'm just gonna move it over here and we have one. It's very tiny because this is a really big device. I'm gonna have to switch my simulator for the next one so everybody can see everything. So let's do some work here. We need some styling so we can actually see these things here. So I'm going to go ahead into our app.css and I'm gonna create a class for toggle, which is our grid layout here. 
that's going to be the toggle itself. So I'm going to give it a class of toggle. What do we want here? We want to define a border. That's the most important thing so we can actually see the thing. I'll give it a border of one and a border color. I'm going to start out with gray, but that's going to be really dark. So I'm going to use Visual Studio Code here to give us a really light color, like maybe 243. And if I save this file, you're going to see nothing because the grid layout is actually taking up the whole screen. So we need to give it a height. I'm going to give it a height of uh, 34. And that's going to make it really small right there. Now, just so that we can see this, let me override the border color here temporarily with red because it's going to be really light to see in the video. So you're probably not going to see it, but red you'll see. Okay, now let's go with a margin. Margin left, we'll set it to 20 just to kind of inset it a little bit. And margin right, we'll set that to 20 as well. So that's the toggle switch area, which happens to be defined by the grid layout component. I also want little rounded corners there. So I'm going to give it a border radius and I want it to be pretty much circular. So I can do 50% here or I can do half of the height, which is 34. But if I give it a big enough radius, like, I don't know, 100, it's just going to be maximum. So that's going to be perfectly circular. If you don't want it to be that much of a radius, you can uh, give it kind of a rounded rectangle look. You can do that as well. I'm going to go with a large radius to make it circular. So that's our toggle. And we have one button in there, rather one label. Let's go back to our XML here. So there's our label. A grid layout, you can have multiple things. So let's go ahead and add two more. I'm going to add two and I'm going to add three. Now, if I save all these, you'll see that all of them are on top of each other. That's because in the grid layout, we need to specify columns and rows. Uh, we're not going to have multiple rows here. We're just going to have multiple columns. Now, you could make a vertical switch that's going to act exactly the same. Maybe I'll do that in another video. Just let me know down in the comments below if you want to see that. So that would be really cool as well. It's an idea for you to do as an exercise. But we're just going to stick with a horizontal one. And for horizontal, we're going to divide this into columns. So I'm going to go to the grid layout and say columns equals. And I want three equal columns here. So star, star, and star. This is going to give us three columns and they're going to be all equal, taking up the maximum amount of space. That's what the stars mean in the columns. And for each one of these labels, we need to now stick them into a column. So column equals zero. They're zero indexed. Then I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to do column equals one for the second label and column equals two for the third label. And this is going to spread them out like this. So one, two and three. Guess what? If you wanted a fourth one, you can do that, too. And you can actually create this interface programmatically, which is really nice. Here, I'm going to add a fourth one. Let's call it four. And then I'm going to need to define another column in the grid layout like that. And now we have four items. I'm just going to leave this as three. So we're not too crowded, but know that you can do that. And you can also create this programmatically. So now we need that little switch that goes back and forth. And I'm going to add that here in the grid layout as a label. Now, I'm adding this as a label because it's just an easy component. It's already ready made and I can style it however I want. It doesn't need to have text, but you can also create a custom shape and a custom component to be that toggler switch inside the toggle bar. And I have a video here showing how to create a custom component if you need to do that. So I'm going to give this an ID of toggler and it's not going to have any text. We don't need it to be have text because we just want a look and we're going to define the class for it as toggler. Notice the placement of this label, though. The placement is before any of our text labels. And the reason for that is because these are going to be on top of this one. So in the view hierarchy, if you take a look at this in three dimensions, this one will be on the bottom and these three will be on top of that. Let's go and define the toggler class in our CSS. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pretty much just copy everything here from toggle and let's see how that looks. I'm going to save everything and there we go. So I'm going to make some adjustments here. I want the height to be 30 because I want some space there between the top and the bottom. I want the margin left to be one and the margin right to be one as well. Border radius can stay because we want it circular and there we go. Very nice. So now you can see that it's actually falling into column zero by default and you can programmatically control what column we're going to put it in at the start. 
So if you need this to start out at some column programmatically in the beginning, you can do that. You can programmatically grab a hold of this, which we're gonna do in a second anyway, and you can set its column attribute. I'm gonna leave it at zero, and that's the default, so that's why you don't need to specify column in a grid layout child, and that's the look of it. I'm gonna just do one more thing here, and I'm gonna add a background color here of, uh, let's do red, but I'm gonna do really, really light red, like almost white here. Okay, so now we can have a background color here on the toggler itself, and this one can be white. So it kind of sticks out from the background a little bit. And this border color, you know what, since we're going with red, I'm just gonna stick with red, but I'm gonna make that border color really, really light. And there we go. Here on the toggler, I'm gonna make the border color a little darker, but still in that red category. There we go. I hope that that comes out well in the video. It's gonna come out better than gray and white, so that's where we are. But this just demonstrates the power that you're gonna have with being able to control the styling to the maximum here. Anything you can see is just gonna be styles. Now we need to actually make it do stuff. And here's where that loaded event comes in. So on toggle loaded is what we called on the grid layout. Now you could of course have a tap event on each one of these labels, on each one of the items. But we don't wanna do that because what if you create this programmatically or what if you add another label later, you wanna have this on toggle loaded on the grid layout itself, on the toggle bar itself, so that you can programmatically assign tap handlers to these, however many you might have. So let's go to the code now, and we're gonna export a function called on toggle loaded. It's gonna have event data as its arguments, as its parameter, and args.object is the object that called this handler, which it happens to be the grid layout. But the grid layout is very specific. What if I change the grid layout later to some other layout, like absolute layout, which I'm not gonna do in this case because I really like the columns and the rows here. But I'm gonna cast this as a layout base because layout base is gonna give me what I need and it's not gonna be too specific like a grid layout. So I'm gonna import layout base from TNS core modules. Yes, I'm still using TNS core modules, not the new scoped packages but if you are using the new scope packages, then you can import from there. Check out my video on scope packages if you don't know how to do that. All right, so that's coming from layout base, and that's gonna be const lb for layout base. Now, the reason I want a layout base is because lb has this each child view function, so we can iterate over the children and call a function for each child. So this function has a little bit of a quirk. It needs to return a Boolean. I'm gonna return true here. And we get past a view, which happens to be each child, which in our case is gonna be all labels. So these are gonna be all the children of this grid layout, which are all labels. And we wanna attach tap handlers to just the ones that are not the toggler, but the items themselves. So we're gonna do a little check. If the view, which is the child, and it has a class name equal to toggler, we're gonna to skip this and we're just gonna return. But if that view is not a toggler, that means it's our item. So we're gonna tap into the tap event. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna hook up the tap event, I should say. And we're gonna give it a handler. And this is also gonna get some args. We can't call it args because we already have args up here. So I'm gonna call it a event data. And we know that these are gonna be labels, but we don't want to cast them as labels. Again, what if we change that later on? So it's gonna be a.object we're gonna cast this as just a plain old view because all our views, labels, buttons, and so on, they inherit from the root view class. Now, here is the key. I'm gonna get the location of this label in the context of the grid layout, if it's parent. So I'm gonna say location equals label dot get location relative to LB, okay? So LB is our layout base, which is this grid layout here and we're gonna get the location of the label of each child relative to LB. And location is gonna have a couple of things on it. It's gonna have X and Y. Now we're moving horizontally here, so the only thing that's really we care about is X. If we were doing a vertical toggle bar, then we would care about Y, but now we just care about X. So let's do this. I wanna go ahead and move that toggler, that white toggler switch, which is this label right here. I wanna move that to the position of the label that we tap on. So I need to get a hold of the toggler first, and I'm gonna get a reference to it up here outside of the iterator for each child. So here we have toggler lb.page. We're gonna get a 
reference to the root page, and then get view by ID. And we're going to call toggler. And I'm going to store that as a view or cast it as a view. Remember, this is the ID of the toggler right here. Okay, so we're going to get that toggler. And we're going to say toggler dot translate x equals location dot x. Now we're going to animate this in a minute. But I just want you to see how this works right now. We're going to go here, I'm going to click on two. And you can see that the toggler switch just jumps right to two, three, two, one. And this might be enough for your use case. But usually you want something like this to be animated. So it looks a little bit better. So instead of just translating this, we're going to animate this. And the way we animate it is just toggler dot animate. And we're going to pass in an object here defining our animation, we want to translate and translate takes in an x coordinate, which we know will be luck dot x and a y coordinate, which is just going to be zero, we're not translating the y coordinate, we want to give it a duration and usually a duration of 500 is good for this kind of micro interaction. And we want to give it a curve. But I'll come back to that in a second, you'll see how ugly this looks <laughs> without a curve. And I'll show you how to get a nice curve out of it. So there is that I'm going to demonstrate this for you. Let's go to two and you can see that that animation is actually really, really annoying feeling. I mean, to me, it feels really annoying. It's still an animation which looks better than just switching it immediately, but it doesn't look very snappy and it doesn't look very smooth. So that's why we need that curve in there. Right now, it's set to linear, but we want to do a custom curve. And the tool that I really like using I've showed this before many times on this channel is called cubic .com. And here you can just try out different animation curves and you can actually physically manipulate the curves right here like that. So you can see what the result will be. And uh, the red item is what you're looking at. And once you're done with that, you can copy these values right here. There's four values, you can copy them out of the URL. And we're going to paste them here. So I've already created a nice little curve that I like for this particular animation. Let me show you what that is. In order to get that cubic Bayesian animation curve, we need to import from TNS core modules, UI animation, and then animation. And this is called cubic Bayesian animation curve. That's the class we need. And we need to create a new one cubic Bayesian animation curve. And the numbers that I picked are 0.6, 0.72, and then zero and then one. Now let's compare that way that looks. So I'm going to click on three and you can see that the curve is really nice. It's snappy. So it speeds up very gently and then slows down right to the end. It's really, really pleasant. There's one more quirk on Android that I want to work around. So in order to show you that let's run this on Android, I'm going to go out here to the terminal and say TNS run Android. And here we are on Android. Notice anything funny? Well, yeah, these labels they're at the top of the bar and we don't like the way that looks do we No. So one way to quickly fix that is to implement this class that we've put on all these labels called toggle label, I'm going to copy that. And let's go over here, toggle label. And the only thing we really need here is to assign a vertical alignment of middle. So vertical align middle, I'm going to save that and let's check it out. Okay, so there it is on Android. This is an older Android emulator. I run this because I want to see how slow or how laggy the animation is. And in this case, the animation is pretty smooth. So this is a really nice component to use. Now, again, if you want to wrap this up in a component, or if you want to see me do it, just leave a comment down below. And please share this video on your social networks and let folks know how to do something like this in native script. It's a pretty cool effect and it's not very difficult to do. So if toggle bar is not a name you would call this thing, let me know in the comments what you would call it. I'd be really curious to hear some of your ideas. Let's read some of your comments from a previous video I did. This one's the image map in NativeScript tutorial. So a lot of times you need to show a map in your NativeScript application in your mobile app, but you don't want to have the burden or the heaviness of showing a Google map or a map box. So in this video, I show you how to use an image and how to add tappable points to that image based on different points of interest on the map. Justice Arthur says, Thanks, Alex. I really loved it. I want you to make a video when you can scroll a page both horizontally and vertically. You can make use of horizontal red list view as well. Thanks once again. Well, horizontal scrolling is one thing and vertical scrolling is another thing. And you can do one or the other at a time to do both at the same time would require some gesture handlers that we currently don't have you'd need to write native code for that. And usually when your intention is to scroll, it's either horizontal 
or vertical, you don't typically scroll diagonally unless you're doing some kind of image editing or working with images. So yes, you can handle it, but you'd need to probably make some native calls for that. Bilal Mohammed says, you're awesome, keep going. I'll do that, thanks Bilal. Santiago Rivera says, thank you Alex, your content is pure quality, happy native scripting. Happy native scripting to you also, Santiago. Alexandro is back, he says, keep native scripting it, love it. Duri Partush says, thanks Alex, you're welcome Duri, welcome back. Mohan says, it's very useful, thank you very much. In native script, which is the best, TypeScript or JavaScript? You can use either TypeScript or JavaScript in NativeScript. It supports both. I'm a big fan of TypeScript because I work with larger applications and it just helps me out, especially if you're working on a team. I have a video coming up on creating TypeScript applications from a JavaScript application in NativeScript. How to do an incremental conversion if you do start with JavaScript. There's a lot of benefits of why you would use TypeScript over JavaScript and I'll make a video on that one of these days just to go over all the details because there's so much. Ehor says, cool, thanks. Ashaya says, thanks Alex, I'm struggling to fix ADA issues with side drawer and images. Was wondering if you do videos for ADA issues. So ADA is the American Disabilities Act and it has to do with how your UIs handle situations where people with disabilities are using your application. When you're creating applications on mobile devices or on desktop devices, there's certain laws in place and different countries have different levels of these laws that require you to um, support people with disabilities. And if you're building third-party components for a platform like NativeScript, then you have to make sure that your components also comply with ADA rules. And if they don't, then there's going to be some issues that people with disabilities are going to have. They're not going to be able to use your application, which is not good. So NativeScript Pro UI components, according to the documentation at least, they support ADA, but I haven't done anything special other than using the ones that come out of the box. So I haven't really tested any ADA specific things in it. But if you have, let me know in the comments down below if there's issues that you came up with or if there's uh, other things that you saw, ways how to fix these issues. Kalimula says, can I run native script on my Windows for Android and iOS both? So if you have Windows and you're building your native script apps on Windows, you'll be able to run a local emulator for Android. You won't be able to run a local emulator or simulator for iOS, but if you have an iOS device and you're running on Windows, then you'll be able to do a preview of your application on your device, on your iOS device. You'll have to use the preview command that comes with the CLI. And Sergey says, hi Alex, thanks for the great tutorial. What about the detection of these label icons from the screen by code? Is it possible in NativeScript? I think it'll be something related to grabbing the pixels from the screen inside the rectangle around the touch point, extract colors, put them into a two-dimensional array, and compare it with a predefined array of the label icon. What do you think? Sergey, you always come up with really awesome ideas. That's a good idea also. And uh, I think that'll work. But the biggest issue that I've had with JavaScript libraries is how do you detect the colors that are underneath your touch or how do you even detect or extract the colors? A pure JavaScript library that'll do that with images without having to rely on the browser. If you can find a way to do that, I think that'll solve a lot of our problems. All right, folks, until the next time, happy native scripting.